There are ancient scriptures that do not form part of the original Bible, one of them being the Book of Enoch. In this book, Enoch describes 10 different levels of heaven. He was guided to each level by an archangel, witnessing what each level held. Some of the beings in the higher realms were so terrifying that Enoch was left trembling with fear. This is what he saw. In the book of Enoch, Enoch describes a moment when he met angels who took him to heaven. He shares how it all started with a dream, where he saw these beings coming into his room. Little did he know, he was not dreaming at all. He writes, I was lying in my bed, asleep, when a great distress entered my heart, and I began to weep in my dream. I couldn't understand what was happening to me. Then two huge men appeared before me, unlike anything I had ever seen on earth. Their faces shone like the sun, their eyes were like burning lamps, and fire came out of their mouths. Their clothing was beautiful, and their wings sparkled more than gold. Their hands were whiter than snow, and they stood at the head of my bed calling me by my name. When I woke up, I saw those men standing right in front of me, and I was so terrified that my face changed with fear. But the men said to me, Be brave Enoch, do not be afraid. The eternal God has sent us to you, and you will ascend with us to heaven. And thus starts Enoch's journey through the heavens. The first heaven is believed to be just above the firmament, a dome-shaped structure that covers the earth according to the Bible. Enoch describes seeing a massive body of water, much larger than any ocean. The Bible mentions that there is water above the firmament, as stated in Genesis 1-7, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Enoch describes the first heaven the following way. They took me up on their wings and carried me to the first heaven, placing me on the clouds. And behold, they were moving. There I perceived the air above, and even higher I saw the ether. They placed me in the first heaven and showed me a vast ocean, much bigger than any earthly ocean. Enoch also describes seeing a mysterious group of figures known as the Elders and 200 angels who govern the stars. After this, Enoch goes on to describe the second heaven. The second heaven, as described by Enoch, is a place that resembles hell, but is meant for fallen angels known as the Watchers. Enoch describes it as a place filled with darkness, far greater than any earthly darkness, where he saw prisoners awaiting judgment. Curious. Enoch asked the angel why these beings were being tormented. The angel replied, These are the ones who turned away from the Lord, disobeyed his commandments, and chose to follow their own path. They plotted together and rebelled against the Lord with their prince and those who are restrained in the fifth heaven. The third heaven, as described by Enoch, is a place of paradise reserved for the righteous. This heaven is a beautiful and pleasant place where the righteous will dwell because of their good deeds. However, there is also a darker side to this heaven that resembles hell. Enoch 2.8 says, The angels took me up to the third heaven and set me down there. I looked downward and saw paradise, a place so incredibly pleasant. The trees were full of bloom, the fruits ripe and sweet smelling, with every kind of food growing abundantly. In the middle of it all, there was the tree of life, where the Lord rests when he enters paradise. This tree is indescribably beautiful with a wonderful fragrance, more lovely than anything else created. Paradise lies between the corruptible and the incorruptible, and the two streams flow from it, one of honey and milk, and the other of oil and wine. These streams divide into four paths, flowing quietly through the paradise of Edom, eventually diving into forty parts as they descend to her. Every tree in paradise bears fruit, and the entire place is blessed. Three hundred bright angels look after paradise, singing and worshipping the Lord without end. Enoch then describes how the angels told him, This place, Enoch, has been prepared for the righteous. The righteous are those who suffer through life's calamities, who are just and kind, who feed the hungry, clothe the naked, lift up the fallen, help the injured and orphans, and who live blamelessly before the Lord. For these people, paradise has been prepared as an eternal inheritance. So, in essence, this is the heaven described in the Bible that awaits the faithful. But Enoch is also taken to the northern region of the third heaven, which he describes as being a frightening place. 
Even though it's still in the third heaven, this side is full of torment, with no light, and a mysterious black fire that blazes up. This place reminded Enoch of hell. As he explored this area, he saw a river of fire, similar to the lake of fire described in the Bible's depiction of hell. The angels told Enoch that this place is for those who don't glorify God. The people doomed to inhabit this realm are those who practice sins against nature, witchcraft, enchantments, divinations, and dealings with demons. It also includes those who boast about their evil deeds, steal, lie, insult, and commit other sins. These people seize the poor, take away their possessions, enrich themselves at the expense of others, and let the hungry starve even when they could help. They do not acknowledge their creator, but bow down to lifeless idols. For all these, this place has been prepared as an eternal punishment. The fourth heaven is where the movements of the sun and moon are controlled. Enoch explains this in more detail in this verse. The angels took me up to the fourth heaven and showed me all the movements and sequences of the solar and lunar light. I measured their movements and compared their light, discovering that the sun's light is seven times greater than the moon's. I saw the sun's circular path and the wheels on which it travels, always moving with incredible speed, never resting day or night. Alongside the sun's chariot are four great stars, each with 1,000 smaller stars under it, four on the right side and four on the left, making a total of 8,000 stars accompanying the sun at all times. During the day, 150,000 angels accompany the sun, and at night, 1,100 angels, each with six wings and engulfed in flaming fire, leading the sun's chariot. As the sun blazes, it sets these angels on fire. In the fifth heaven, Enoch encounters some Grigory. These are giant-like beings that resemble humans but serve Satan. This Grigory are in a state of limbo, not yet condemned, and Enoch persuades them to repent. In the sixth heaven, there are seven groups of angels described as being incredibly bright, even more so than the sun. According to Enoch, these angels are responsible for overseeing and studying the movements of stars, the revolution of the sun, and the phases of the moon. They monitor the well-being of the cosmos, and whenever they detect any evil activity, they organize divine commandments and instructions. They are the archangels who oversee the other angels, ensuring that the divine order is maintained and the universe remains in harmony. The seventh heaven was absolutely terrifying for Enoch. In this heaven, he saw the fiery armies of the archangels, incorporeal forces, cherubim, seraphim, many-eyed thrones, and radiant stations. The sheer sight of so many powerful angels in one place was overwhelming. It was something we as humans simply cannot grasp with our mortal existence. The angels who had guided Enoch up to this point then left him, and he fell to the ground in terror. At this moment, God sent Archangel Gabriel to guide Enoch through the final three heavens. The eighth and ninth heavens are briefly described. Here is how they were portrayed. In the eighth heaven, known in Hebrew as Moth, Enoch observed the changing of the seasons, both dry and wet. This heaven also contains the twelve zodiac signs, which are positioned above the seventh heaven. The ninth heaven, known in Hebrew as Kavim, is where the heavenly houses of the twelve zodiac signs are located. This is followed by the tenth and final heaven, where God himself resides. In the tenth heaven, Enoch describes God's face as resembling iron heated in a blazing fire. In Enoch's words, God's face is indescribable. This heaven also holds cherubim and sephirin armies singing in divine praise. At this side, Enoch was losing it. Our mortal eyes are not made to behold such divinity, so to help him, God instructed the archangel Michael to remove Enoch's earthly clothing and anoint him with a special oil. When Enoch looked at himself, he realized that he was no different from the angels in heaven. While going through the different heavens, I couldn't help but notice that a lot of them are described with characteristics we would attribute to hell. Many levels are in fact designed for punishment. Why would this be necessary when there is already a hell supposedly reserved for the wicked? I would love to hear your opinions below. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tale. If you had fun or learned anything, be sure to subscribe, share this video with someone else, and hit the like button. All of that really makes all the difference in the world. 
Until the next tale, farewell, and may the gods smile upon you.